Hi everybody, this is Dustin Hubbard with Gaming Alexandria. Today I'm just going to do a video and a general overview of how to preserve your old game tapes that you might have laying around. Uh, a lot of older computer systems use these and it's a good idea to get them preserved now while we can because a lot of these are 30 or even 40 years old and may not have much life left in them, especially if they weren't properly stored. So uh, again, this is just a general overview on how you can do this. It's not tailored for any specific system, but it should work for most any of them because the process of actually recording the audio is pretty much the same no matter what the system is. But uh, you're going to need a cassette tape player of some sort to get started. And uh, I've used this one for a long time, and I recently switched to something else, which I'll show you in just a little bit. But you can use any kind of cassette tape player laying around, like I said. Uh, as long as it has a line out or a headphone port that you'll be able to connect to your PC. Now, your PC should have either a uh, line in or a microphone port you'll connect to. And uh, microphone is mono audio and line is generally stereo audio. So depending on the game tape, like I know Atari 800 computers use stereo audio, but most other computers will use mono. So just keep that in mind. But again, if you run into problems with either of these, just try swapping the port around and see if you get better results and record with it. Uh, tape recording is just gonna be a lot of experimentation. You're probably gonna have to do this multiple times per tape to get a good dump, but it's just, uh, trial and error and you'll eventually develop your own techniques for it. Now uh, at the time of this recording and what I currently use is this one right here. It's called the Super USB Cassette Capture and uh, these are, it was like 25 bucks on Amazon. I know it's sold all over the web on various websites so it should be pretty easy for anybody to get a hold of. The big benefit of it too is you don't have to mess with line in or microphone ports any of that. It just connects with USB so it makes it very very simple because every computer nowadays has that. Um, and then you'll obviously need a cassette tape. So I'm using a uh, space warp for the Fujitsu FM7 computer today because I previously recorded with this and it worked just fine. Uh, that's really about it. Now let's go uh, into the software part to where we actually record the audio. Okay, now that we have our tape and tape player ready to go, we're gonna need to get on our computer and get some software loaded in order to get the uh, recording going. So I like to recommend Audacity. It's a free program you can download, and I'll put a link uh, in the description to uh, where you can get it, or you can just Google for it. It's real easy to find. Uh, once you get that set up on your computer, go ahead and open it up, and uh, we're going to be able to look at a few things first. Uh, Project Rate 44.1 is a good one to start with almost always. If you run into problems, you can go all the way up to 96,000 if you want. Uh, a few computers, like the Sharp MZ series, I know, the software that converts your WAV file to data will require 22,000. So it's good just to be aware of what the uh, system you're trying to dump a tape for wants. But uh, for the most part, you can leave it at 441. So I'm going to do that here. Next thing is to make sure you have the proper microphone selected. Mine's this uh, microphone USB. Uh, if you bought the tape player I bought, it'll probably be the same thing on your system too. And then the last thing is to make sure you pick either mono or stereo recording. Like I said, most computers are mono, but a few like the Atari 8-bit series like stereo. So I know this one's a Fujitsu tape and it likes mono, so I'm going to leave that there. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, record the tape. One other thing to note is uh, it's a good idea to fast forward and rewind your tapes completely before you record them. I've already done that with this one, uh, so I'm not going to do it here, but that can get you better results sometimes. So I'm going to hit record in Audacity, and then I'm going to hit play on my tape. And we can tell we have the right microphone selected because there's audio coming in right here. And here in a minute, we'll see if it's a proper audio level. So that's the part that's most important when you record. You have to have good audio levels to get a good recording that'll convert. Okay, it's coming in right there. This is a good level we're getting. Um, you can go a little lower if you want, minus six or minus 10 on the decibel meter up there. A lot of people do that. I've just always had good luck going up this high, but like I said, if you're running problems, just try a different level and see what you get. Next thing I'm gonna show you is what you don't want is clipping. That's clipping when it's going outside of the boundaries. You'll never get a good tape that way, so don't do that. I'm gonna bring it back down to the proper levels right here. This tape's a pretty short one, so 
I'm not going to record it too much longer, but I did want to mention that on a lot of tapes, you want to let it record at least the first time completely all the way through because there may be more data blocks later on in the tape and you'll miss them if you cut it off too early. So like I said, first time, make sure you record the whole thing. I know this uh, recording's not good because I messed with the levels right here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete it because that's not going to be any good for us. And stop my tape and rewind it. Tape's rewound. Now we're going to go and record again. Oops. Hit play on my tape. And this time I'm not going to mess with the audio levels and just let it go the whole way through. Now, uh, some other things you can try if getting a bad recording is to uh, clean the tape heads on your cassette tape player. You can just do that with isopropyl alcohol and like a Q-tip. There's videos out there that show you how to do that. Accessing that depends on your tape player, but if you bought the one I recommended, I mean, it's right there when you open the tape. Super easy to get to and clean. You'll want to do that because the more you play tapes, they'll leave residue on that and eventually it won't read tapes well. So it's not a bad idea to just clean it every time before you record a tape. Uh, one other tip too is uh, a lot of times the program's recorded on both sides of the tape. So if you're not able to get a recording from one side that works, try the other side of the tape and see if you have any better luck with that. And uh, the last thing I'd mention is when you're recording, keep the cassette tape player away from any electronics that could cause interference with it. Like just set it somewhere where it's not really near anything if you can, and that'll help your recordings. Okay, so now I know this recording is done and good. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my tape. And I'm gonna take off this excess stuff. We don't need this. We're only interested in the data, so. And now we have our data recording. So we're gonna to need to export this to a usable format. So we'll go up to File, Export Audio. Uncompressed Files is what you wanna make sure you have picked. And I'll call it Space Warp. The other thing you want to make sure is go down to options, make sure it's set for WAVE Microsoft and encoding unsigned 8-bit PCM. And when this pops up, just OK. So now we've got our uh, data recorded and we can try to load it in emulator, which we'll do next. OK, now we have our WAVE recorded. So the next step is to try it out and see if it works. So I've got my emulator pulled up here for the Fujitsu. I'm going to go up here to play my recording and load it up. So far so good. We can see it found the program name and it's loading it now and no errors have come up yet. Okay, moment of truth. Looks good. That music's not annoying at all. <laughs> okay, looks like our dump is good. Now the next step would usually be, depending on what emulator or thing you're trying to use it on, you'd need to convert the WAV file to uh, the specific data type it wants, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. We know this uh, recording was good and it was just a good general overview of how to dump your tapes. So like I say, it's a lot of trial and error. Good thing is to uh, try to adjust your audio levels on your cassette tape player like I showed you earlier whenever uh, you're recording and just try different ones out until you get a good one. Uh, if you have any uh, other tips or suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, try to add them in. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, feel free to like and subscribe to this video. We'll uh, have more of these coming along in the future. So thank you for watching.